Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Monday, everybody. As we know, Beijing policymakers are doubling down on infrastructure this year, pumping more than a trillion RMB in additional funding into the economy in order to reach politically acceptable growth rates in a very sensitive year, and take pressure off the deepening housing crisis, which is spreading into the banking sector, raising fears of financial contagion. Analysts agree that this infrastructure investment boom is China's largest since the global financial. Crisis, though some argue that unlike the post GFC spending, this latest investment surge will buy Beijing far less bang for its buck. Indeed, profitable projects are not as easy to find this time around, and some have criticized the investment as an outdated playbook response by officials who are unwilling to advocate for the painful structural reforms needed to transition to a more sustainable, demand-driven growth model. Quote, if this investment really made sense, we wouldn't have needed the COVID lockdowns to justify them. The fact that these have been proposed wholly in response to the slowdown in consumption suggests just how questionable they are likely to be. End quote. Taizian analysts write that the National Development and Reform Commission approved 48 fixed asset investment projects in the first five months of this year, worth a combined 654 billion yuan. This is an amount equal to more than 80% of the total investment amount for the entirety of 2021. And more is on the way. Economists at Nomura Holdings Limited and analysts at Citic Securities have predicted 10% growth in infrastructure investment this year. Okay, so what exactly are these trillions buying then? And which sectors are going to benefit? Well, financial outlet Yitai writes that renewable energy, technology and water management projects are set to be among the largest beneficiaries of this investment. Japanese financial outlet Nikkei Asia writes that projects related to digital infrastructure, such as 5G-based stations and data centers, as well as water conservation, wind generation and solar power farms, will all see robust growth under policy support that is, government subsidies. Gas supply projects and coal production will also get a lot of policy love, as energy security has become a higher priority for the country in the last 12 months. Indeed, National Bureau of Statistics data show that investment in gas production and supply projects grew 18.1% year-on-year in the first five months of this year, faster than electricity, 12.1%, and water, 8%, utilities, network investment. We remember back in June, the State Council ordered refurbishment of the natural gas pipeline network across the country by the end of 2025. We can see too that there appears to be a push to try and find new types of projects, what the National Development and Reform Commission calls new infrastructure. Quote, the country has formed a proper network of railways, highways and airports. There may be some room to expand infrastructure in the fields of digital infrastructure and soft infrastructure, such as data centers and public service facilities. End quote. According to a key National Development and Reform Commission report from earlier this year, so-called new infrastructure has been split into three types, or the three I's, information, integration, and innovation. Information is 5G, artificial intelligence, blockchain, cloud computing, etc. Integration is about smart energy infrastructure, think smart driving car networks, and innovation are projects to boost scientific research, think research universities. These will all be sectors of the economy that enjoy robust policy support in the coming years, While it's up for debate how effective the investment will be in the long run, in the short term, a lot of spending will be poured into these industries. And by up for debate, I quite literally mean analysts are currently debating how effective this infrastructure stimulus will ultimately be in productively spurring growth. Quote, some analysts have warned that growth in infrastructure could be undermined by rising costs of raw materials. If inflation is taken into consideration, real infrastructure investment growth may be below 5% this year. In addition, uncertainties surrounding China's COVID-19 situation have slowed construction activity and purchases of equipment. End quote. 
Others warn that all this talk of new infrastructure is simply a distraction to the real elephant in the room. Quote, there is a lot of talk about directing infrastructure spending into new economy and digital infrastructure, such as 5G base stations and data centers, but they involve small amounts compared to the 25% of GDP that property and traditional infrastructure typically comprise. End quote. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed yet and you would like to continue to get this sort of up-to-date analysis on China, maybe consider subscribing. Anyone who is able to go the extra mile and help keep China updates sustainable, Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are in the description below. This is a wonderful way to help me continue making these every day. As always guys, thank you so much everybody for the ongoing support. Now, speaking of so-called new infrastructure, the oil of this new economy will and indeed already is, semiconductors. US lawmakers are finally waking up to this geostrategic reality, a reality to which Beijing has long already been acutely aware. In terms of advanced semiconductors, currently American firms design the devices, the Netherlands produces the most critical machinery for manufacturing them, and Taiwan and South Korea largely fabricate them. The fact that the most advanced types of semiconductors are largely produced in Taiwan makes this policy challenge just that much more dynamic for Washington. These advanced chips don't just power everything from Teslas to iPhones, but Javelin missile launching systems and stealth fighters too. Last Thursday, the US House of Representatives passed the so-called CHIP Act, bipartisan legislation to boost US competitiveness with China by allocating billions of dollars towards domestic semiconductor manufacturing. The bill had passed the Senate the day before and has been sent for signing to President Joe Biden, who expressed last week, quote, This is exactly what we need to be doing right now to grow our economy, end quote, end quote. America invented the semiconductor. It's time to bring it home, end quote. The act includes more than 52 billion US dollars for US companies producing computer chips. There is also another 200 billion plus to go towards broader scientific research with a focus on cutting edge fields like artificial intelligence and fusion energy. Billions in tax credits also seek to promote investment in semiconductor manufacturing. Whether or not the law achieves these goals for the United States, the passage of the act alone shows a greater willingness on the side of American lawmakers to compete with China in the space of government-backed industrial policy. And perhaps in a positive sign that it may be working for Washington, over the weekend China's Commerce Ministry criticized the passage of the CHIPS Act, saying it will, quote, distort the global semiconductor supply chain and disrupt international trade, end quote. Now, speaking of semiconductors in China, late last week, Ding Wenwu, general manager of China Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund, was placed under investigation. Over the weekend, the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, China's top anti-graft watchdog, said that Wang is suspected of, quote, serious violation of discipline and law, end quote. The nicknamed Big Fund is a key part of China's drive to develop its own homegrown integrated circuit industry to reduce reliance on imported technology. But when big money courts confidential projects, graft is soon born out of wedlock. Earlier in July, a former president of Sino IC Capital Co Limited, the sole manager of the Big Fund, was also probed for corruption. In November of last year, another previous vice president of Sino IC Capital was also placed under investigation. The China Integrated Circuit Industry Investment Fund is proving to be quite the cookie jar. Also just last week, authorities said the Minister of Industry and Information Technology has been put under investigation, though Beijing has not said whether these two cases are related. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much everybody for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.